So we're going to be looking at the export of the SpaceMaker model into Revit. Here we can go and hit the Send to Revit button. Make sure you've got the latest download available, which I'm using today. The proposal has now been sent. And here in a new version of Revit, I can look at the settings and I can go to load the model in based on the settings that I've chosen. We have this new pop-up here, which will give us the options to cancel, choose the options, or load the model. Um, options will depend on the type of file you wanted to bring in, whether you wanted to merge walls, keep walls, keep them separate, use different levels, etc. Um, you can do some testing and work out what's best for your particular model. Here we do have some warnings, so some of the items, some of the grids might be a little bit off axis, etc. But again, we're working with a conceptual model. We're trying to work in a conceptual feasibility space. So here I have the grids. Um, if we go into 3D views, we'll also be able to see the levels. And um, in this instance, it does create two different versions of the levels. So you just have to be aware of these things when you're working with this for the first time. If it is two separate buildings, it will create two different levels when you bring it into to Revit. The, uh, the walls, the roofs, and the floors will all come through. Um, it will go on to some new wall types and roof types. It will create a generic roof. It will have external walls. Um, this show shows that it's on building three for example and it will have uh, interior walls as well these are, are built in plus the site topography and the site pad that we created inside of the space maker environment so simply from here we can start to clean up the model here we have uh, some of the things that i mentioned before with the levels uh, so it's actually referring to two separate buildings there. So there's actually showing 10 levels, whereas actually it's just five. Um, here, I'm going to swap out, say, the generic roof for a roof that I would typically use for this type of building. I do have a template set up here. I do have my own wall styles embedded within this template, so I can flick to those very quickly. Um, I won't be doing all of this in this particular demo because it'll be a bit slow to watch me transfer the model. But in essence, you can go through and use your own wall styles, your own window styles. Once you've got everything set up the way you want it, you can purge them out. You can adjust the roofs and clean things up, etc. So uh, very simple. I'm just using two or three different wall types um, with two or three different materials. And I also have um, a window family in here as well. So I can go to the um, architecture tab and I can choose I can choose that window from the architecture tab here. And uh, I have the default windows that load in the model, but I also have uh, just a, a simple window that I've got, which relates to the grid that this building is set to. So pretty simple stuff and um, to save time, I'll be fast forwarding through some of these things. Ideally, what's great here though, is once you have worked out one of the wings, you can then group them and then you can copy them around the model. So this is one that I've done earlier, I baked out earlier, and this is what you can do with not too much time, but I'm just not going to spend 10 minutes showing how to do this. This should be pretty simple for any basic Revit user. And then this is the final uh, result. Now I am focusing on the central courtyard here so i've added some benches i've added like a little trough for the water feature and then these are just grouped and uh, copied around the model same as the benches the background buildings i haven't gone into too much detail i've just kept them uh, very simple uh, i've also got uh, a view so i want to have this key view showing that vista looking down the central of the institute here so once i've got the model in revit set to a standard that I'm happy with. I then want to send it to Twin Motion. All you need to do with the new Twin Motion in Revit 2023.1 is click the Twin Motion button and that will fire it up. So this is the 2022.2.3 for Revit. And I'm just going to use the defaults here. 
depending on how you want to use this, you can um, collapse them in different ways, like by material. And then when this fires up to in motion, we have the Revit file that is linked, depending on the speed of your computer. This may take a couple of seconds to process. And here we have the model with the materials inside of the twin motion environment. We can also look at some options here where we can um, reload the information. And um, also back in Revit, we can look at different linking or going back to the old Datasmith type uh, setup here, which for any legacy users of twin motion, um, You'll be pretty familiar and there's a few other settings um, new settings here so back here inside of twin motion i want to keep this pretty simple i just want to go to some of the settings here and configure it um, i don't want to have that default background city that's there so i want to get rid of that so here i'll go to the settings and just put that on uh, home and then also there's like a, a, a base plate or a plane there in the background. I'm just going to delete that out as well. Um, I'm going to leave the topography as is with the aerial map um, and not do too much with the materials. Um, there's a huge amount of tutorials on this. Um, I've already done the materials in Revit, so I'm just going to leave it as is for now. What I want to do is create a, a video. Um, the video, I just want to do a basic camera movement. I want to also add things like a different background as well. So using that video, I'm just going to navigate to the part of the model that um, I want to, to focus on, just my starting point. And that's a pretty famous shot for anybody who's studied or seen or searched for any images of the Salk Institute. And so I'm just going to move this around. Uh, my computer is a little bit slow when I'm running all of these tools all at once, recording this and running a uh, potentially a gaming engine. Um, tool. So I'm just going to refresh that to make sure I've saved that first shot. And uh, under more, I can do things with the camera. So the default 18mm might be great, but maybe you want to go for more of a cinematic sort of shot. You could take it out of the 15 or 16mm uh, lens. Um, also, some other things I'm looking at here is the environment. So by default, there's a dynamic environment. Um, I'm Old school when it comes to lighting environments, so I like to use a dome, and then I like to use an HDRI. So you can go to the library, navigate to HDRIs, make sure you're signed into the Epic Games environment, and you can download that HDRI or that background image that you want. I'm just going with the clear skies, set more towards sunset, and you can see those those three uh, balls there. There's reflection, there's a white model, and there's also the, uh, the glass uh, just gives you an idea of how that HDRI will work in that environment. And then here, once uh, it's downloaded, I'll just put a little love heart because it could be a favorite of future um, visuals. And then I'm just dragging that into the environment and this will be changing that environment for me so we can see the um, HDRI illuminating that space. Now, more settings here to get this right i'm going to make this really large so you can drag that up to the top so it's a 500 meter dome or you can type in the amount that you want so you can see here as if i increase it it's going to flex a lot more um, other things you can look at is the rotation depending on where you want the sun to be you could adjust the intensity um, and as you're adjusting this, you're getting real-time feedback on how that is going to illuminate the space. So um, I'll just leave it on um, a, a, a default of 2.2, which relates to um, gamma settings, if you're familiar with those. Um, there's the height offset, so you can see the dome was actually sitting there in that courtyard space. So I'm just dropping that down 10 meters. I'm not getting into the weather. Um, there's all so more settings you can look at. So um, ambient settings to bounce global illumination almost around the space to give it a bit more brightness so it's not too dark. You could adjust your shading. You could um, also look at whether you want it to match the sun or not. So this all comes down to personal preference. Um, it can sometimes take a bit of fine tuning. There's also the exposure settings. So again, I might uh, crank that up a little bit. Um, or take it back down to 
the original setting depending on um, how it's showing. There is the um, white balance here as well. Um, so I want to make it feel cooler. So I can drop it down to say uh, 5,500. And then depending on how you want to work, you can turn off the auto exposure. So this again comes down to how you want to work with the file. Um, and again, it is fine tuning because when you go in to turn on things like the ray trace setting, this will again affect the look. So this is all um, running in real time on the screen, giving us instant feedback. So when we make those adjustments, we're going to instantly see how that light's going to bounce around the space. But um, you'll see when we go to look at other settings, um, it will keep adjusting. So, so back here, say when we look at the um, settings for the renderer, you can turn on Ray Tracer and this will consume more processing power of your PC. Um, there's a few fireflies here and this might relate to reflections and materials. There's a denoiser. Um, once you turn this on, then you'll need to go back and consider how you want the lighting to work. Now I think uh, what has happened here is the sun intensity has dropped to zero. So we can crank that up to 100 or back to the default of 25 and we're starting to get some nice effects here. Now, the faster your PC, the longer you leave it for, the uh, more it will clean up. And ideally those uh, little dots there, the fireflies will uh, start to remove. So once we have all these settings fine-tuned to give you that output, you could also use the materials that are inside of Twinmotion. Um, so because I've done the materials in Revit and I'm happy with them, I don't really need to adjust them. But if you want to use all these materials here, you can go through the built-in ones and then just drag and drop pavers here. Um, you can adjust the reflection, the scale, the weather, um, numerous other settings. But if you want to um, uh, do more, um, you know, crank up the, the bump map to give it more depth, you can do it all. You can also uh, look at adjusting things like the, the scale. So at the moment it's set to one. I want to crank that up so I can see it. You can do, uh, take it to the top, it goes default 10, but you can also type in the number as well. So even though you can't drag that scale up, um, you can still type it in to see those tiles. With the ones that I've already got in Revit, they're editable as well. So I can select that and I can see the materials that have come through and I can drive the scale of those pavers from that Revit file. So that's pretty cool because to go back and do this in Revit will take a little more time. Here we can do it very quickly inside of Twinmotion. So finally to uh, finish off the output that I want here, I want to have two camera views here in the model that's going to be running for 10 seconds. Um, uh, I can adjust maybe the angle a little bit uh, depending on how you like to work with the camera settings, you can adjust how it's going to be, be skewed. So if you want to have a more vertical look, you can turn that on if you want. Um, here, I'm just doing the second, uh, sorry, the final uh, image that I want to finish at. So the final point, so a nice uh, low view looking up. Um, and again, you can use the um, Q and E keys on your keyboard to make these adjustments. Um, I'm just going to refresh to make sure it captures that keyframe. And here we have the play button to actually run that. So we can run it and we can see over 10 seconds that we've got, say, three to four seconds worth of footage. Um, we can do other things. Um, so here you can go and click on more and you can make adjustments to the lighting or to the rendering engine if you want to turn that on. Um, for this particular one, I'm just going to use it with the standard global illumination. Here for the rotation, I'm going to look at um, where I want the light to be at that starting frame at zero point. So um, again, it's, it's like fine tuning a car. You just got to tweak it as you want it to be. And you can type in the number if you want to be a bit more precise. Then just going back to the uh, video, refreshing to capture that change. And then at the end frame, doing the same thing, going to the lighting, going to the environment, clicking on more, and then 
choosing um, the rotation that I want that sky and the sun to be at the final frame here. And again, I can type that in if I want to be a bit more um, accurate here. So back to the video, hit refresh to capture that change and then hit play. And now I have my camera panning down and I have my dome lighting environment giving me the shadows. So here uh, I can now quit out of the video editor. Um, I could potentially turn on the ray tracer if I want to run that and I can crank up all the samples if I want really high in quality. Um, I'll go to the video export and click on that file. Choose the folder I want to save it to. So this is just going to skip forward and show it processing. So this is now exporting. Now this will just do it pretty quickly, like in two minutes. If I have the ray tracer on, it's going to take a lot longer. So here I have the two minute render. And again, I could probably adjust the windows, play around with all the settings, but it's a really quick way to get some output. This one here is the one that I ran out with a ray tracer. I did take this one into a post-production tool to do some color grading, but again, you can see the, the results.